So we are say, going to see about the last two sensors we have in our syllabus, the thermal sensor and the water level sensor. The thermal sensor, you know, it is found in uh, many uh, applications and you can find in many household electronics. We have, in the, even in our house, we have a, we, everybody might be having a small thermometer, which is going to measure the human temperature. In case of any fever, we'll measure the temperature and see what action can be taken. And this the thermal sensors also inside the thermostats of your air conditioners. So you will also find these sensors inside a personal computer or in a microprocessor to constantly monitor the temperature. Because uh, only when the temperature is within a particular limit, all the semiconductor components are going to work properly. Otherwise, the reliability is going to be very, very poor. Okay, so temperature plays a major role in the performance of all these semiconductor devices. And hence, monitoring the temperature is very, very important. That is done by using these thermal sensors. So you have a thermal sensor you are seeing. It. It's a three-pin sensor. And it is going to measure the change in temperature. And the change in temperature is represented as an electrical signal. It may be voltage or current or electrical resistance. So there are many sensors available in the market which are going to measure temperature directly. Uh, and uh, you cannot uh, display that uh, temperature directly using a digital device because it uh, it can accept data only in digital format, right? So I need to convert that temperature into equivalent electrical signal. Electrical signal means it can be voltage or current, or I'm going to convert that in the form of resistance. From resistance, I can measure voltage or current indirectly, okay? That is the purpose of a thermal sensor, okay? And uh, types of thermal sensor, the very first thing what doctors use is a mercury or alcohol thermometer. You have mercury, in, uh, which is uh, put inside a glass tube, and uh, it, it is used, it is going to expand when the temperature is going to increase. So at room temperature, it will be at normal scale. When you place the temperature inside your mouth, it is going to be the temperature is going to increase, so it is going to expand proportionately. So you are going to have a dried, uh, you are going to have a mercury or alcohol, which is going to expand with the temperature. So the amount of expansion the mercury is going to do is proportional to the temperature of the human body. You can be, you can uh, assume like that. And uh, they are not well suited for uh, personal computing or microprocessors. So these types of alcohol-based or mercury-based uh, thermometers are not useful for uh, uh, in micro for microprocessor-based uh, equipment because they will become they are the size is going to be a major factor. They are going to be very huge. So I need to have a compact device for uh, measuring the temperature inside my microprocessor. So other kind of thermal sensor can be are available in the market which can be used for personal electronics and microprocessor, including thermocouple, resistance thermometer, silicon sensors and radiation thermometer. So these uh, the last four types of uh, thermometers what we are going to study are going to be compact and most reliable in the digital uh, display devices. So now, you know, we are going to measure the temperature and we are going to display the reading in the LCD. So we are not going to go in depth. This is an LCD port. This is going to display the temperature value here. And we are going to interface this with uh, what is called as Arduino, Arduino Nano port. Arduino Nano is a microcontroller, which is used to do some basic uh, functions and interfacing your devices. So you see here, I am, I am interfacing this temperature uh, LCD to the micro Arduino port. And I'm going to, I'm also going to connect. See here, uh, the description is given. See here, uh, 14, 11 to 14 are used for display. So 11 to 14 are used for display. And I'm going to connect. The pin 3 is connected to the potentiometer. Okay. And uh, pin 5 is used to read or write. So these are the different pins used in the LCD. Okay. LCD has close to 14 pins. And I am there given how the pins are connected to the Arduino Nano port. So once you connect them, you see here, you can see the display temperature is 33.99 Celsius. So the temperature sensor is here. Okay, this is a temperature sensor. It is going to measure the temperature. It is going to convert the temperature into electrical voltage, send it to your Arduino. And Arduino will issue a command to the LCD display to display the temperature in discrete numbers. 
and this is the temperature sensor tmp36 it is a very cheap sensor available it is going to have three pins one is for uh, uh, power supply one is for uh, ground and one is for the output the middle pin is going to be the output we have seen here right three pin so the middle pin is this middle pin is going to be the output the one pin is going to be plus pi and one pin is going to be ground so if you connect them it will uh, it will measure the temperature change immediately and you can write the code and you can every 30 seconds you are uh, you are measuring the temperature so it will be displaying and uh, once we observe for a periodic uh, once we observe for a particular time period you can see that the temperature is going to vary accordingly okay so it records the instantaneous temperature values for a certain period and displays the average temperature during the given period so 30 seconds it will measure the temperature every second and it will take the average of all the readings and display it to the user so that is how this temperature sensor is going to work so remember this tmp36 is a very good uh, cheap available thermal sensor which is going to help in measuring the temperature of the uh, surroundings okay so next one we have water level sensor so water level is mostly used we are going to use water level sensors in our water tank to automatically turn on or turn off your motor okay okay so the, again the definition of sensor is given it receives energy from one system and transmits it to another that is physical variable into signal variable so what it measures is a physical variable what it is going to send is going to be the uh signal variable so energy can be transmitted maybe electrical mechanical or acoustic electrical means you know it is voltage or current mechanical means it can be the vibration or acoustical means it can be in the form of sound wave also the sensor is going to sense a physical parameter and convert that into a signal variable for understanding okay so types of sensors we have for water level sensors we have contact and non contact contact means you have pressure type you have capacitance type you have shaft encoder type and buffer type and non contact means you have ultrasonic type radar type and mmc type so these are the seven types of uh, water level sensors available based on contact and non contact contact means you are going to that is going to come in contact with water non contact means you are going to measure it from a distance okay that is the meaning contact type pressure sensors you see it is submerged at a fixed level under the water surface so assume you have a tank and always tank has to be 50% full so at 50% level you will be fixing this pressure sensor so at uh, it is it measures the pressure of water above the sensor so as the water crosses the sensor it will measure the pressure is created it will measure the pressure above the sensor and it is like weighing the water so it uh, it will not work as long as the water level is going to touch the sensor and if the water level touches and slightly goes above it it will it immediately it will have a pressure and that pressure is measured and accordingly action is going to be taken so that is going to be pressure sensor so i am going to measure the water level proportional to the pressure okay proportional to the pressure sensor this is contact type because water is going to hit the sensor stop gauge gauge type you know it is going to be providing a quick and easy indicator of water level so you can uh, you can uh, keep a gauge at the Uh, desired water level and you can measure the water level at the tank so it is made with a durable baked on porcelain enamel finish on a metal plate because it is permanently kept inside water right so if there is a chance that uh, it might become damaged or corroded or the paint may go off so it is uh, it is uh, uh, made with a durable porcelain baked in porcelain enamel finish on a metal plate so on a metal plate you do all these additional uh, coating to ensure that it is not corroded when it is uh, permanently in the water okay and uh, this is the gauge type you know you, know, you can uh, see this is also used in the dams to so measure the water level there is a pressure sensor okay this is a simple pictures of both bubbler systems are hydrostatic pressure sensors so they are used to measure water level detecting the pressure required to force air through a submerged tube So what happens? We are going to the bubble system of all the type of pressure sensor only, but I'm detecting the pressure to force the air through a submerged tube. So what happens? The tube is mounted at the end of the tube below the water surface being measured. So what happens? The tube is uh, below the water surface being measured, and the air emerges from the bottom of the tube as a stream of bubbles. So as and when your water level is going to rise, you are going to have pressure. That pressure is going to be released in the form of bubbles. So okay, I am going to detect the pressure. 
using a submerged tube so you have a tube lying vertical as the water level is going to increase so the water uh, the pressure inside the tube was also going to be vary the other end of tube is connected to the bubbler system one end of tube is left open so by calculating the pressure which is uh, created inside the tube because of the water which is emerging from the bottom to the top you can measure the uh, water level using the bubbler system okay so from to one is uh, contact type pressure directly i am measuring the water level uh, uh, proportional to the pressure second one is staff gauge it is just like a visual indicator of your reading third one is the bubbler system where i am going to use a tube and i am going to measure the pressure of the tube one end of tube is connected to the water level water one end of tube is connected to the pressure device hydrostatic pressure sensor so now digital pulse doppler so next one is a doppler uh, uh, sensor so it is also going to be a contact type contact type means it is going to be in connection with the water so you have a transducer that alternates the transmission and reception of ultrasound so you keep at what level you want and you periodically send and receive ultrasonic signals so pulse the doppler means i will not be sending continuously i'll be sending at regular intervals of time okay so or you send one beam and you receive another you will receive the reflected ultrasound beam right so depending on that you can measure the distance from the distance you can measure the water level okay this uh, the location of the sam uh, sample volume is operation control so pulse the doppler is going to use uh, ultrasonic sound waves to detect the water level so you have a transmitter and receiver module fixed inside the sensor the transmitter will send a sound wave it will go and hit the water and come back as a reflected wave and the receiver will capture the reflected wave based on the distance and time calculation the distance the speed and time calculation i can measure the height of the water level inside my tank so see here the pulsed doppler uh, digital doppler you see here you have a sensor here it will go and it will hit the water level and again come back and uh, it will be you can profile it and see in the computer what is the level of water you are able to identify okay and aqua profiler is also a contact type sensor this system is uh, this system is used to measure both the vector and magnitude of the individual velocity cells to account for velocity variation within the flow and obtain the flow profile so this is used when a system uh, where your yeah, water is flowing in a tube so so far water level we are measuring in static systems but here the aqua profiler is used in its uh, tube or a pipe where the water is flowing I, I, and i want to measure the velocity profile velocity profile means both the vector and magnitude vector is going to be the direction and magnitude is going to be the strength of the water within the flow and obtain the flow profile so inside a water how the different molecules of water are flowing the so third vertical acoustic or hydrostatic sensor beam is used to measure the water level okay so i am going to use this uh, uh, acoustic uh, sound wave to measure the water level so see here the velocity 2d measurement the so water level measurement is done using uh, the hydrostatic pressure sensor inside the tube non kono non contact so far all these uh, sensors what we have seen they are contact type it means they are coming in contact with water so now we are going to see about non contact uh, devices okay so non contact devices so they operate by sending a sound wave from the piezo electric transducer to the surface of the process material being measured the transmitter so same like uh, how much time it takes for uh, uh, going hitting the water and coming back based on that you calculate the distance okay factors that as dust heavy vapor tank obstruction and other things you have to be consider when you are uh, considering the calculation of the water level so the previous thing pulse doppler it will it will calculate till the water is going to touch it but here in ultrasonic transmitter i am going to keep this at the top of the tank so that the water will never touch the sensor it is going to be a non contact type so it is going to measure the water level periodically and accordingly send signal to turn on or turn off the motor okay it is going to be a non contact type of water uh, level indicator next one radar same way instead of ultrasonic sound what i am do i will be sending uh, high frequency my rf signals rf is radio wave signals okay sending microwave beeps emitted by the sensor to the surface of the liquid so when after hitting the surface they will return back 
and that signal is calibrated and again you can find the level okay so uh, uh, when i am going to say ultrasonic i'll be using sound as the uh, medium for transmitting and receiving but when i am going to say radar i am going to use microwave beams or high power rf rf means radio frequency signals so installation sensor installation where i want to install the sensor first you want to select the right type of sensor so you should know first clearly what uh, sensor you want to use measuring range you should know maximum and minimum water level which you should be considering so in an apartment uh, you assume you have a tank so the tank is 100 uh, the tank is uh, say uh 6 feet tall so my water level should always be between 2 uh, feet and 5 feet so it should always be constantly between 2 feet and 5 feet so 2 feet is going to be the minimum water level and 5 feet is going to be the maximum water level so the water level goes below 2 feet the motor should be on automatically the water level goes beyond 5 feet the motor should be off automatically so that is how the range you are going to set what is the minimum and maximum water level next one whether you are going to go for natural or man made sensor so the or i can say the presence of large rock in the canal gives not really that is whether you are going to fix it on a, uh, a static surface or it's going to be a moving surface so that is going to be the consideration installation details uh, how we are going to install and where you are going to install on a bridge or a tank or where you are going to install and you have to also consider the environmental and seasonal conditions like wind wave salinity in case of uh, sea water means that if they hit the uh, sensor means the sensor may get damaged salinity bank stability and should be determined so all these things should be determined so now after installing all these sensors you have to see how and when to collect the data from the sensor so the how i am going to get the value of voltage or current because you will be measuring water water level which cannot be uh, directly uh, displayed to you so you have to display the mass voltage or current so and so for that how we are going to acquire the data and how we are going to report the information so in case of any eventuality how we are going to control what necessary steps steps you have to take for data analysis that's why i told right the water level goes below a predetermined level what step i should take i should turn on my motor if the water level exceeds a particular maximum level then it will lead to overflow in that case i need to turn off my motor so how i'm going to plan all the control steps so this is the data flow path you have a database you have a remote you can view everything from a remote app or something you have a communication model which is going to uh, periodically send the water level and sensor will be giving the uh, logging the data and the data will be processed by the processor okay and uh, this is the radar sensor system so they will be having a, a, a support pillar for the uh, radar so this radar will be Uh, emitting the waves or the uh, vertically downwards they will be reflecting and coming back again from that i can calculate the water level so you have a stable rock surface on which this pillar type arrangement sits made to hang the radar vertically and uh, other equipments the communication storage and other things are in a better proof for metal box for uh, uh, protecting them from environmental calamities okay so from based on the reflected nature of the em waves and the transmitted em waves you can measure the the height of the water or i can measure the water level so this is the radar uh, sensor system and you can see that uh, on a particular day the water level was very high it rose to 1.75 meters otherwise it's going to be constant around 1.25 on a particular day the water level was say might be some reason maybe rain or something that the reason uh, you can periodically monitor the water level and you can measure the hourly value also everything is the data is you, you are having the data with you you are just converting the data into presentable format that's all comparison ultrasonic you are going to use sound wave radar i am going to use high frequency microwave or rf signal so both are non contact type only so limited operating pressures and temperatures so yes and high temperature pressures do not affect the device performance so i can it is used in high temperature pressure, pressure environments but here it cannot be used everywhere it has some limitations on pressure and temperature both are top mounted so that they send the waves vertically downwards and conditions affect measurement performance because sound waves are more prone to noise but here it is not affected by environmental conditions
okay it is not affected by environmental conditions because microwaves are very strong signals performance is acceptable based on the strength of the reflected sound wave so sound waves very weak you cannot uh, get this uh, water level accordingly but here it is exceptional it will work independent of the process conditions okay some of the data example is given for different dams where these data has been uh, uh measured so see here uh, so the formula everything is the design is given what structure you have to use and how you are going to uh, keep the uh, sensor and other things everything is going to be seen here you can you, you see here how the water flow is uh, carried out so since the radar is uh, going to work very well so it is not going be affected in the rain or solar radiation or wind or fog we believe that the radar measurement is actually more suitable to major canals for most accurate measurements the so what i have told you water level is the domestic application of uh, in the water tank i told you but whenever you are in a river or in a lake where uh, you want to measure the water level or the velocity profile other things you can also go for these types of sensors so another type is uh, the uh, the temperature sensitivity is also there and uh, the error can uh, error can amount to more than 20% if i'm going to use ultrasonic sensors because sometimes the 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 thing is uh, error prone the ultrasonic based measurement is error bound so sometimes i have to tolerate with the error and the price difference between ultrasonic and radar is also very high the so radar is very comparable um, to the, the price is uh, previously initially with the radar systems was developed it was very costly the difference was very ultrasonic was cheap and radar system was very very costly but now considering the technology both the price have been almost same so you can use the radar when the performance is very very good so see here the average cost installation everything is given and you can choose accordingly what water level sensor you want in your application the permanent structures like bridges and drops are found to be a suitable place for sensor installation because they are there the sensor will not be disturbed otherwise sometimes the sensor is the, if the sensor is disturbed and the readings will also be wrong the major challenge include theft and unawareness so yes people are not aware that you have kept a sensor they might uh, either uh, throw it off or they might steal it so that uh, issue was there in our country and the environmental condition it can operate from minus 40 to 80 that's a very good temperature range and the humidity from 20 to 80 percentage humidity and uh, vibration resistant they have the vibration resistance up to 100 hertz the side data is given and uh, available models available see the some of the models available in the market radar raining sensor so it is this clamp is used for fixing this radar so that it is always seeing downwards another type of radar is given see this is how you are uh, fixing the radar this is sonic ranging means ultrasonic ra radar so the sound wave will be transmitted exactly below okay this is how it will look like the recorder data recorder data type and you see you are sending ultrasonic signals continuously and it will be coming back and uh, see uh, touching your receiver so this is how this is what we have for the water level sensor so any doubt you have you can ask and uh, i will send a mail regarding uh, the date so i hope everybody is having only on 27th okay so in case if anybody is having the exam on a different date please respond to the mail so that i can plan and upload the question papers accordingly